Hi, and welcome to Hull & Hull TV. I'm your host, Dana O'Brien, and I'm joined by Ian Hull and Susanna Popovit montag partners at Hull & Hull LLP, an innovative law firm with offices in Toronto and Oakville that practice exclusively in estates, trusts, and capacity litigation. Here on Hull & Hull TV, we're exploring the issues around estate planning that affect you. Ian and Susanna, one of the realities is that families are becoming more complex. People are living longer, there are second and third marriages, oftentimes there's a lot of money involved. So Ian, what happens when a surviving spouse decides that there isn't enough money, they want more? Well, it's a really important consideration and one that arises much more often than one would think. The trouble is, with the enhanced wealth comes enhanced lifestyles. And so what one might think would be enough for your surviving spouse at the time doesn't turn out to be because you haven't sat down and done the math and considered that maybe half isn't going to be enough and maybe there's going to need more to sustain what is a lifestyle that they've come accustomed to. Susanna, under what circumstances can a beneficiary make a claim against an estate for more support? You know, Ontario, under the Succession Law Reform Act, someone who qualifies as a dependent, someone who is a partner, a, um, a spouse, a parent, a child, a brother or a sister of the deceased, can possibly make a claim if they can demonstrate that the deceased did not make adequate provision for their proper support at the end of the day. And so that's going to depend upon things like ne uh, needs kinds of based test as well as a test based possibly on moral considerations. Ian, what are the chances of the claim succeeding? Well, it really depends, as all lawyers have to say, on the facts. And in our situations, in situ situations where you are claiming support, it depends on the basis upon which you're making the claim as well. Are you making it because you need the money or are you making it on the basis of a combination of need plus the moral obligation of the deceased to have provided for you? And is that a cornerstone of the claim and what element of it exists? That will depend on the likelihood of success. And is there anything preventing other family members, Susanna, from jumping on the bandwagon and, and, and claiming they also need a, a bigger share of the estate? It definitely is possible if they can meet that definition of dependent. And if so, then it, as long as they make a claim within the six months after the date of probate, because that's sort of the limitation period within which we see these kinds of claims that can be brought, then it's possible that they may be able to do so as well. It sounds messy. Ian, how can all of this be avoided? Well, I often will tell my clients that as they establish their estate plan, do the math. Sit down and calculate how much realistically someone is going to need to live their remaining years of their life as the surviving spouse, as the surviving married spouse in particular, how much are they going to need to spend? and do that calculation carefully with some assumptions but some projections. Have that then have that discussion with the family who are impacted, the other beneficiaries. So the combination of thinking it through in terms of what's realistic and not hiding from that calculation, which many people do unfortunately, and talking about the results of the mathematical doodling that you did at the dining room table is fundamental to making an estate plan work. Ian and Susanna, good advice. Thank you. And thanks for joining us on Hull & Hull TV.